21 before the hour on America in the Morning. Congress designated May as National Military Appreciation Month. That was years ago. Gives the nation a chance to publicly show their appreciation for troops past and present. Perhaps no one more able to eloquently speak about the holiday than Mr. Lee Ellis president of Leading with Honor, a leadership and team development training and coaching company. He's the author of the upcoming book, Captured by Love. More on that in a moment. More importantly, as it relates to today, he was a Top Gun fighter pilot in Vietnam, shot down, captured, and repatriated in 1973 after more than five years as a POW in Hanoi. Mr. Ellis, uh, thanks for joining us. How can America show its appreciation for our troops? I think it's so important to let people know that you see them and acknowledge them. When You know, when somebody acknowledges you in a positive way, that's uplifting. It makes you feel better. And so by, first of all, acknowledging their existence and who they are, I mean, this is true for every human being, but especially for people who wear the uniform, getting involved with uh, things in your community where veterans and service people are helped either to transition from the military into the service or in community groups that acknowledge veterans. It's just so important. I think it's just being intentional to do that, and it just makes all the difference in the world when you let somebody know they're appreciated. Now, this must have been uh, equally as important as a Vietnam veteran coming home because the guys from World War II, let's face it, they came home heroes. There was quite a different attitude in America when you came home, even though you were a prisoner of war for five years. What was the temperament of the nation like when you came home? Maybe you wore the uniform or were acknowledged in public as having served. What was it like in the mid to late 70s? Well, there there were two interesting things that happened. One, most uh, Vietnam veterans were treated not very well by lots of places in public places where the anti-war people would spit on them, uh, denounce them. In fact, in many places, military people were told, just don't wear your uniform there. Did did that happen to you personally? No, it didn't. And here's why. The amazing story, and the story is in the book, of what the women did, the wives and families did, of of POWs and MIAs. They got together, formed a league, and they put together a national PR campaign, state by state, to get the American public to confront our own government to make sure they put pressure on the communists to follow the Geneva Conventions, which say that prisoners should be treated by lenient and humane treatment and be allowed to write letters and so on. Mm -hmm. It really raised the attention of the American public about POWs. Your, your book is Captured by Love, Inspiring True Romance Stories from Vietnam POWs. You and your yes. wife uh, mm-hmm. now celebrating 48 years together. So uh, I'm, t- I'm trying to do some quick math. That had to be after you came home, right? Yes. Now, the book covers about 20 stories, of which about 10 or 11 were married and stayed married. About five or six were divorced when they came home. The guys, their wives wanted to move on or had moved on. But they met someone within the first uh, few months and married. And now they've been married more than 48 years. And single guys like me, there are about five stories of single guys like me that met somebody when we came home. And I've been married 48 and a half. (laughs) And I was about the last uh, single guy to get married. So most of them have been married 49 years. And our marriages have been really so good. And the the book kind of covers that and a little bit on why. We were able to, the POWs, because of what the wives did to change our treatment, the communists, when Ho Chi Minh died, their president and founder died in in September 1969, the new leadership stopped the torture. That's amazing that they did that and changed the way you were treated. 95% of the POWs uh, were tortured at one time or another, especially those most of us were there five to eight and a half, uh, to eight and a half years, mm. and then they started the bombing to get us out of there in 72 when they fully invaded the South, and then about another 120 were captured in 1972. Lee Ellis was a Top Gun fighter pilot in Vietnam, captured, repatriated in 1973. He resumed his Air Force career, eventually retiring as a colonel in 2014. He was inducted into the Georgia Military Veterans Hall of Fame, DAR, Medal of Honor recipient. The list goes on. We could do another show just on his awards and 
commendations. What do you see uh, when you drive by? Uh, you see the American flag flying. What do you think today? Well, I, uh, I think of all of where we started and how far we've come and how proud I am of my country. At the same time, I'm very concerned that 40 or 50 years from now, we will not be the same country because uh, of our stuff happening to change our values about what's really important and of our unity. The young people today are being educated in a way that doesn't really tell the whole truth about our government's founding and our growing up and uh, as a country. And I'm just really concerned that uh, it's going to fall apart. Well, Mr. Ellis, thanks to people like you and the proud men and women who continue to serve, there is hope. One last plug for the new book. Thank you so much. And just go to pwromance.com and you can read all about it.